What's crack? Big dogs. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is B D G E. Big dogs gotta eat. And as always, every Tuesday morning, we're hitting you with our top five waiver wire pickups at the running back position. We're gonna do another video. We're gonna drop that in a couple hours for pass catchers, both wide receivers and tight end so make sure you are subscribed to the channel just literally scroll below and there's a button that says subscribe and if you're doing it right you put the d in it hang running back top five waiver wire targets for week six of fantasy football y'all know the rules we're gonna tuck our shirts in stop yelling let's see Okay, so anybody who is needy at the running back position, you can be thankful for the fragility of the knees and ankles around the league of the, the starting running backs out here because we are just witnessing injury after injury after injury after injury to the knee and ankle position of the human body. CEH suffered what looked like a really, really intense injury last night to his knee. Turns out it is just an MCL sprain, so he's going to be out a couple of weeks a few weeks, whatever that may be. Uh, it's going to be somewhere between two and four weeks, most likely. MCL sprains are not the scariest type of knee injury that you can get. In fact, they're usually not like lingering. They're not too serious. You rest them for a couple of weeks and usually you're back to full strength as soon as the doc gives you clearance. In regards to him leaving, Darrell Williams takes over as the clear backup to Clyde Edwards Hilaire. In this game, in this game, we'll, we'll look at some of just this game in particular before we talk about the entire situation as a whole. The Kansas City final snap count between their, uh, their running backs, Darrell Williams 37, Jerick McKinnon 27, and then Clyde at 22, obviously, because he was injured. Uh, the opportunities after Clyde Edwards Hilaire left, six to Darrell Williams, one to Mr. Jerick McKinnon. I know you guys are going to ask, Jerick McKinnon, are we picking him up? Is he going to force a committee? He's more athletic. I'll put it this way to you. We're five We're five weeks into the season. We're five games into the 2021 season. Jarek McKinnon has one carry. He is averaging 0.2 carries per game. That should answer your question. That being said, if you're in a deeper league, you're in a dynasty league, and he's on your wire, why not fucking throw, you know, throw a $0 fab bid at him? Use your 10th waiver wire spot on him because you never know what could happen in that backfield. So Jarek McKinnon. Not exciting. Darrell Williams, very exciting. The question becomes, though, how good is this Chiefs team still? Are they good? Do we even want the running back in this backfield? Because we know they don't get that involved. The Chiefs are two and three. They've lost four of their last six. Here's what I'll say to that. The Chiefs are averaging 30.8 points per game. That's number five in the NFL. And over the last five seasons, that would be at worst number two in the NFL, if not leading the league in a few of those seasons. The Chiefs are still scoring at a Chiefs rate. Their defense is abysmal, and yes, it doesn't look good. They're not getting it done like they typically do, but the Chiefs are still very high-powered. The problem with getting your hopes up for a guy like Clyde, and we've learned, is like he wasn't Shady McCoy. He wasn't Brian Westbrook. Those guys didn't succeed because they were under Andy Reid. They succeeded because they were successful, and when you're successful, you succeed, okay? Clyde, not that guy. You're not that fucking guy, Clyde. When we look at the numbers, Chiefs running backs this year per game are averaging 4.6 targets per game, 3.8 receptions. They have zero total end zone targets on the year, 19 carries per game. This is really low volume for a combined running back group, right? You might say like, oh, we're going to get 19 carries and 4.6 targets per game out of Darrell Williams. That's the total running back group. That's your first string, second string, third string. If you throw a couple random ones out to a fourth string or a fullback or whatever, that's what this running back total is. So 4.6 targets, 19 carries a game. The one stat that leaves me excited for Darrell Williams is that the Chiefs offense right now has three total running back carries inside the five yard line on the year. All three of them have gone to Darrell Williams, okay? That was over the while Clyde has been healthy as well. So he already had the goal line situation handled, all right, in the bag. So now it's just Darrell Williams going forward. And again, this is a team averaging nearly 31 points per game. So those opportunities are going to come over the next few weeks. The other thing to talk about is Clyde Edwards Hilaire. And yes, he's been efficient and putting up some bigger production games over the last few weeks before we saw him get injured. But here's a tweet from Matthew Betts. Prior to last night's game, Clyde Edwards Hilaire's share of the running back attempts were trending in the wrong direction. Week one, 93.3%. Week two, 81.3%. Week three, 70.8%. Week four, 58.3%. Chiefs were clearly seeing something they didn't like in Clyde Edwards Hilaire. And it just I just don't think he's that good of a running back. 
Darrell Williams was already starting to eat into those carries. He was getting the goal line work. So when Clyde returns in like three to four weeks, there's a really good chance this is straight up just a committee. This is straight up just like 15 touches for Clyde, 13 touches for Darrell Williams. So Darrell was probably going to have some standalone value going forward along with like nice RB2 value for the foreseeable future. So Darrell's my number one pickup at the running back position this week. And if you're running back needy, we're going into bye weeks now. If, if you're one of these guys with injured running backs, like Darrell Williams is going to be a really, really solid top 15 to 18 play for the next few weeks. So I would, you know, I, I would definitely drop 10, 20% of the budget on Darrell Williams if you still have fab left. And I don't have any fab left, so I'm not getting any of these guys. Next up on the list would be Devontae Booker, because we know Saquon Barkley's ankle literally looks like this fucking thing right now. Saquon Barkley suffered a low ankle sprain and a low ankle sprain is going to be very subjective to the actual injury that occurred. Typically, they're not serious. We see guys be day to day and re and return to the game. We see guys uh, miss, you know, are limited in practice and then can play the, the next week or whatever. With this one, though, you're looking at swelling and you're looking at pain. So the swelling was enormous. That being said, uh, it's going to take some time for this thing to go down, obviously. So he's pretty much all been ruled out for next week. Most of the doctors that I follow, including myself, I'm technically a doctor, multi-weeks. Two weeks probably is what we're looking at for Saquon. Devontae Booker steps in and is the every down back once Saquon leaves. The problem is what happened, like, he's, Devontae Booker is going to be the every down skill player because there's nobody fucking left on this team. Kenny Galladay hyper extends his knee. He could be back next week. So Shepard's out with a hamstring. Darius Slayton's out with a hamstring. Darius Tony punches a guy in the head, probably breaks his fucking hand. Everybody's hurt on this offense right now. So leaves Devontae Booker with like a 15 touch floor. If Daniel Jones is out, who has a concussion, who cares what 15 touches in the New York Giants offense does? However, in yesterday's game, it led to 16 carries, 42 yards on the ground, and a rushing touchdown, as well as four targets, three catches, 16 yards, and a receiving touchdown for Devontae Booker. Sounds like we're talking about Antonio Gibson here. 20 empty touches, 60 yards, and two touchdowns. Pretty much the same fucking stat line. Devontae Booker is going to catch three to four passes a game. He's going to get 15 plus touches a game. He's going to have all the goal line work. You talk about Gary Brightwell, the rookie. Gary Brightwell was active for this game. Didn't see a single fucking snap. The only other running back that got anything in this game was Elijah Penny. He had like one carry. And he's a fullback, okay? I feel like every single year at one point or another, we have Devontae Booker being like the top waiver wire pickup of the week. Somehow, some way, the last four years, he's had at least one or two weeks where he is that fucking guy. And guess what? We are here. We're at this point of the fucking season, all right? He's a clear pickup here. He's going to be a fine flex op option for you. High volume, not high efficiency, not high powered offense. But if he gets a goal line carrier too, he could roll his way into 14 points or so for your flex spot. Over the next few games, they get the Rams. Tough matchup, obviously. Carolina, not an easy feat. Uh, Kansas City, terrible. Las Vegas. So the matchups here and there, that's something for you to kind of simmer on, to marinate on. You could definitely do worse than someone that's probably going to give you a floor of 60 yards, three to four catches. Khalil Herbert, man. Khalil Herbert looked great. Uh, David Montgomery gone the first game without David Montgomery. We have Khalil Herbert taking 34 of 64 snaps, 18 carries, seven routes run, zero targets. Damian Williams, 31 of 64 snaps, 16 carries, 10 routes, three targets. Williams also had three of the four carries inside the 10-yard line. It's possible that they were splitting a little bit more work than we'd like to have seen because Damian Williams came into the game a little banged up with the quad injury. He looked like Damian Williams to me. Didn't look like the quad was hampering him whatsoever. Didn't instinctually feel like that. It felt like something that made me nervous as a Damian Williams owner in a lot of places. It felt like Khalil Herbert is on the cusp of, this is a 1A, 1B situation, it feels like to me. Damian Williams seems like the pass catcher had three targets, caught two of them for 20 yards, so wasn't heavily involved. This is not an offense that's passing the ball a lot. I think Justin Fields had 20 attempts or whatever. He's not throwing the ball a lot, so there's not going to be a lot of targets going towards Damian Williams if the game script is like it was yesterday. And Khalil Herbert was involved early. He was involved often. He was getting work all over the field. And as you can see, he was running routes. So, like, I think this is a situation where it's 1A, 1B. I would still take Damian Williams going forward, obviously, over Khalil Herbert. But don't be surprised if they're splitting carries 50-50 and Damian Williams takes a slight edge on targets, on routes run, goal line work. Who knows? It might just be whatever back is in the game at the time that takes the goal line work. So, I think Damian Williams got lucky because he got the touchdown for fantasy owners. Ended up with a fine day. I think this makes him more of, like, a low-end RB2. Going forward, I think Khalil Herbert is usable in the flex spot for sure. There's not going to be every game. They're not going to be getting, uh, you know, 35 running back carries like they did yesterday. But in good game scripts, Khalil Herbert's going to be usable in flex for sure. I mean, you don't come out and grab 18 carries and go off into fucking nothing unless you're a San Francisco 49er running back. Um, and speaking of, if Elijah Mitchell was dropped and he's available on your waiver wire, he definitely deserves a pickup. You could drop Trey Sermon for him because he were RB1 once he was back. But um, Khalil Herbert 
deserves to be owned in every league for sure. Because he might take over the goal line duty. He might take over. He might continue to see 15 carries a game. Like Khalil Herbert, a lot less than Damian Williams still, but definitely someone to keep an eye on. Uh, Michael Carter, same shit we've been saying all season. He's taken over as the one here in New York. Still splitting time with Ty Johnson. Still splitting a little bit of time with Tevin Coleman. So never really know what you're going to get out of him. I mean, he's playing the Falcons, so I'm not getting too excited about the touchdowns that he's had over the last couple weeks. Still a shitty situation, so he's not someone I'm blowing fab dollars on. And then you have Alex Collins, last guy on this list. He played on 71% of the Seahawks snaps on Thursday Night Football. Ran 22 routes, uh, 15 of the 20 running back carries for Seattle. Three of the six running back targets for Seattle. 15 carries, 47 yards. Uh, the three targets turned into two catches, 25 yards. So, okay game. I was watching that, bro, and that dude misses wide fucking open holes like he's blunt. Like he's just Stevie Wonder out there running the rock, man. Like this dude is like cutting into a hole, into a non-existent hole when all he had to do was walk forward. So I don't think Alex Collins is a good running back whatsoever. But if Chris Carson misses time, and I said this earlier on the live stream that I did yesterday, we just did a full recap of week five's game. So if you missed that, go back onto the channel and check it out. Chris Carson's dealing with a chronic neck injury. Chronic is, it seems like it's a big deal, but it doesn't always mean that it's going to be a short-term problem. Like Todd Gurley was dealing with chronic knee issues, but for like the first eight to 10 weeks of the last couple seasons, he was putting up a touchdown a game. So it's not going to kill you short-term always, right? That might be, I mean, he might be fucked, right? But right now I think it's a pain tolerance thing. Right now I think Chris Carson will be back. I, I'm not feeling good that he's going to be effective when he is back though. This feels like a pain thing that he's going to have to deal with for the rest of the season. And he's banging his head and his neck right into defenders. So I feel like we're going to see a heavy dose of Alex Collins going forward. It's clear that they want to use him in a pretty full capacity. The problem, again, is Russell Wilson's probably out till after the bye week, week 10, week 11, whatever. And it's like, do you want the starting running back who probably is not going to catch you any passes in a Geno Smith-led offense? Probably not really. So I'm not going to. And Chris Carson might be back next week. We don't really know. We don't know if he's going to miss any more time. But I think Collins deserves to be rostered. I think you can use zero fab dollars on him and pick him up and use a roster spot. I think the the more uh, telling thing is whether or not at this point in the season you could use roster spots on a player like him because it is bye week and you need every roster spot to potentially turning into a starting uh, starting player right now. So that's the last guy on this list. I think quickly to uh, ca uh, wrap it up, we got Darrell Williams. We got Devontae Booker. We got Kula Herbert. We got Michael Carter. We got Alex Collins. We got Elijah Sermon if he's available. Miles Gaskin is another guy who might have been dropped in your league coming off a big target game. Two is coming back probably next week, latest week seven. We've got a lot of injuries on the Dolphins wide receiver front. Jakeem Grant's gone. Will Fuller's on the IR. Devontae Parker was hurt last week. So we have a lot of... Um, I just realized this entire video might have been delayed. We have a lot of options right now, though. So a lot of receiving options gone in Miami. So that's probably what led to Miles Gaskin seeing such a high targeted game. And that will probably be the case going forward. So pick him back up if he's available. That's all we got for you today. Subscribe if you're new. We'll have the uh, wide receiver tight end video dropping later today. We've got the full Fab Guidance article up on the uh, store right now. BBG.store forward slash community exclusive article that we only put out up there. And that's it. Hit thumbs up if you enjoyed. We're out of here. Peace. Let's <laughs> go.